Who are we? We, we are, are the Winans. Who are we? We are the chairs. The chairs? No, <laughs> not the chairs. Hey guys, so I just wrapped up a little mini series called Choosing the Best Lens for You. If you haven't checked it out, I'll put a link to it down in the description below and up here if you're on YouTube. So I thought I would kind of keep the whole mini series idea rolling and tackle another question that I get all the time, which is how do I edit my photos? Had you asked me this question five years ago, my answer would be completely different. Nowadays, I've got three monkeys in tow. So time is extremely limited. If I'm gonna find the time to edit photos, I'm gonna have to do it on the go with this little device here. Now, one of the huge benefits to editing photos on your phone or tablet is having access to hundreds of photo apps that are both free and really affordable. However, one of the biggest pain points to editing photos on your phone is figuring out how to get them from here to here. So in part one, I'm gonna show you the three methods that I use on a day-to-day -day basis in the real world to get the photos from my camera over to my phone. The first method is Wi-Fi. So if you've purchased a camera in the last six months, chances are good you have a camera that has Wi-Fi functionality. The setup is pretty much the same for every camera. The first step is to turn on Wi-Fi with your camera. And usually you have to go into the menu and enable Wi-Fi. Next, you go into your phone and you connect to the Wi-Fi network that your camera is broadcasting. The final step is to use your camera branded app to transfer the photos from your camera over to your phone. The nice thing about Wi-Fi is that there are no wires. So you can go out and about taking pictures without having to carry an extra cord or a computer to get the photos from your camera over to your phone. Having said all of that, Wi-Fi can sometimes be kind of clunky and slow. And that leads to the second option and my preferred method for transferring photos. And that is to use a memory card adapter for your phone. Now, I have the iPhone 6 Plus, so I went out and got this lightning to SD card reader adapter for around 30 bucks. If you have an Android device, they make something very similar. It's called an on-the-go or an OTG memory card reader. And these memory card readers basically plug right into your phone and then allow you to insert your memory card and transfer the photos over a wired connection. Having a memory card reader plugged right into your phone gives you super fast transfer speeds, especially when compared to Wi-Fi. So when you're transferring large photos, even video, that process is so much faster. Now I'll put a link to both this reader here and a couple Android memory card readers down in the description below so you can check them out. Finally, the last method that I use is Dropbox. With Dropbox, you have a folder that lives on your computer. So any photo that you drop into your Dropbox folder will automatically appear in your Dropbox app on your phone or on your tablet. This is great for those of you who don't have a camera with Wi-Fi or you don't wanna spend the extra money for a memory card reader. And most of us transfer photos to our computer anyway to back them up. So during that transfer process to your computer, you can select some of your best photos, drop them into your Dropbox folder, and then you'll have them available to you on your phone for editing. So there you have it, three different ways to transfer photos over to your phone and edit on the go. <laughs> That's my cup. <laughs> I want to wish each of you a happy Halloween. And I also want to thank you so much for watching episode 32. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. And also don't forget to subscribe. That way you can watch my videos in your feed each week and not miss out. Well, until next time, you guys have a great rest of the week. Happy clicking.